Hi, I'm Sean Durham once again and uh, I live in Berlin, the city that street photographers love to explore. And today in this video I want to be able to introduce a few ideas for creativity about uh, how street photographers um, should really focus on using their ISO, shutter speed and f-stop in order to get much better shots. When it comes time to think about the technical side of photography when you're out there on the street um, you've really just got to think about your ISO, shutter speed and f-stop um, in order to become creative. But you've got to think about it in terms of what you see, what you're looking at, not what something in a book says about what uh, shutter speed you should use for photography because there is, no, there is no even constant light situation when you're out on the street. You're not controlling the light, it's, um, it's dimming and lighting up uh, more and more. It's changing all of the time throughout the time you're out on the street. ISO controls the measure and intensity of light that hits the sensor at any one time when you're pointing the camera. Um, your ISO setting is extremely important regarding um, you know, how, how exposed you want your photo. ISO set at a level that will allow you to expose your shot in a way that you can incorporate your creative vision into what you're looking at and get the shot you want rather than just a nicely balanced shot. There's many ways to be creative on the street and one of them is to balance the ISO against the f-stop and the shutter speed. But it isn't enough just to think of ISO as being a level that we shift up and down in order to get higher and lower exposure. It's much better when we think of it in terms of its combination with shutter speed or aperture in order to get the creative looking shot that we want. Shutter speed uh, has a large effect on how much light is allowed in at any one time. So, you know, one in sixtieth of a second is a slow shutter speed and you've got to hold your camera pretty steady for that. Uh, but at the same time, if people are shifting about moving and you're taking shots of people who are moving quite quickly, you are going to discover that maybe there's a few blurred edges in there somewhere. Um, if you are doing street photography, I think really from what I would I hear from other street photographers, that something like 1 in 500 or right up to 1 in 1,000th of a second is, uh, is a good shutter speed. As I'm generally around 250 to 500, but if I notice there's a lot of movement and I'm also I want things like cyclists, cars, motorcycles to also be in focus, then I'll bang it up to about 1,000th of a second in order to ensure that uh, I can capture everything in motion without too much blur. With that, of course, I'm going to have to um, put my ISO up to quite high, depending on what the light is, and that depends on what time of year it is. Right now, we're moving into uh, a deeper autumn. Uh, winter will be coming, and the days are fairly dull. So I can really see myself working with uh, something like 1600 to 2000 ISO and above uh, in many situations. The difference could be that if you have a lower shutter speed, a slower shutter speed, then you are going to be able to get softer shadows, especially at the edges. That's something that comes from art. Um, it's well known that soft edge shadows can create a certain effect in your photos. Um, but if you have a higher shutter speed, it will in fact uh, sharpen the edges of shadows and possibly make them darker, depending on your ISO and how intense the light is. You just got to think about time of year. It could be that you want to capture skin tones and the skin tones uh, on a, you know, the lovely pale autumn pallor of a person passing by or the rosy cheeks of springtime. Uh, that can depend a lot on your f-stop and also your ISO, which you don't want to use too high in order to blow things out. So if you want to be able to create softer shadows or sharper shadows or harder edges, then you've got to think about all three of these in combination with one another. ISO and shutter speed must be balanced together. It's best to experiment for yourself in order to get your vision of street photography. But there's another tool and that is f-stop uh, that we use in order to achieve depth of field. And depth of field um, can make an enormous difference to what is in focus in your shot. How deep do you go into the area in front of you and keep things in focus? This affects very, very much um, the composition 
and what is considered maybe your your framing area or the whole composition and what the person looking at your final photo would find of interest. Depth of field allows us to keep a lot of objects in our vision in focus. So if you have a really um, deep depth of field, you might be going from anywhere from F11 upwards, uh, F14, right up to F22, in order to make sure that everything way back behind the middle ground is also in focus. Um, you're going to find that if you bang it down to something like F2.8 or F5.6, you're going to have what's in front of you um, in focus and it's going to be allow, allow you to have a background which is slightly blurry or bouquet slightly in order to make sure that the viewer of your photo, the final outcome of your street photography, is going to understand which part of the photo is of most importance. Also the colours are going to be a lot, sharp, uh, you know, a lot more texture in the colours. For some reason, uh, some photographers like to only focus on the face. So they use something like a 1.4 f-stop or a 1.8 or then 2.8 etc. Um, or there's the happy medium of hitting f8 which will allow you to ensure that you have a lovely focus and uh, pick up a lot of textures in everything around you but not too far into the distance. Um, for some reason people like to work with the bouquet all the time and always uh, make sure that everything in the background is a bit fuzzy and fluffy. Um, I don't really like that too much because I always think it's um, just somebody with a great lens and they're proving to everybody that they can create bouquet as if that's nice to look at. It's negative space. Depth of field controls the focus uh, and how far away the lens stays in focus within uh, the foreground, middle ground and background of your photograph. It's also important to think about how far away you are as a photographer and your lens to the object that you want firstly in focus, your foreground, uh, and to make sure that you're not getting too close and not too far away. It's all very well to do an, a very open wide shot with a 50 millimeter or a 35 millimeter, um, but you've got to make sure there's something close up so that you can have a very strong focus on that and also pick up its textures with the whichever choice you make about uh, your f-stop. What's really important and what's the real point of uh, this whole thing about f-stop, shutter speed and ISO is that these are the tools that we use in order to get the shots that we want. And as street photographers, I think most street photographers would agree that it's a creative pursuit. What it isn't is a technical mathematical operation of uh, setting the camera correctly for whatever the light conditions are. Uh, that's just how we use our tools and how we make decisions and the decisions we make about what we want from what we look at. Uh, this is an artistic or creative um, decision um, and therefore experimentation with all of these settings and the combinations of how you can have a high ISO and a high shutter speed to get things very very snappy and sharp in your photo and then possibly a, a deep depth of field with something like f14 16 18 f22 all of this um, is great fun to practice and that's what it's all about it's good fun and the outcome is a great shot um, we practice this enough and we start seeing improvement in our work when we're aware of what we're doing with ISO and don't go looking for lists of ideas of if you're photographing on June the 1st in, uh, in the middle of a city, um, your ISO setting should be this and this and that. Um, rather, do what you want to do. Do what you think is edgy uh, and take a risk. It's a digital camera. You're not wasting film. It's not costing you money. It is only costing you time. But that time might be well spent making a mistake because you can learn from mistakes and seeing what I did wrong there. Uh, I've done that many times. I also um, take shots and sometimes I realize it's this here that's not working very well. The rest of the camera is fine, the technical side. So if you get everything technically correct and the way that you're framing things and composing things through the lens isn't really working because up here you're feeling a bit numb or sleepy, 
then what's the point of all the scientific or math knowledge about where you should stand and how and what the exact distance is for a 50 millimeter lens, uh, what the exact ISO should be in accordance with the shutter speed, etc. Uh, all of that is nonsense unless you know what it is you want. And it goes back to that old thing of um, not only street photography, but any photography is you must have an intent. Cameras don't have intent. So your intention is here and you know what you want. That's creativity. Color. And winter is coming and that is a big challenge. And so for anybody going out there into the winter, don't begin to think, oh, summer's over, so there's no street photography. That's not a good attitude. The good attitude is that all year round, 12 months of the year, you'll be able to create fantastic photos if you only have the attitude of take up the challenge. So it's a drizzly day and it's raining and people are wearing dark clothes uh, and their heads are down and their shoulders are hunched up and they're wandering down the street and you think everything looks so depressing. But the thing is, you're photographing society. You're photographing the streets of the city you live in um, then go for getting that impression. Uh, rain and uh, cloudy weather, that's all part of life uh, and therefore it's worth documenting as a street photographer. So here's a final note to, that is worth thinking about. As a street photographer, you're a creative person using a camera which is a very technical object. But street photography is not a science. It is a creative pursuit. And that means individuals can perceive it in any which way they want and how they want. And that is where your creativity comes into the situation. And it's all about what's in here and what you think and what you think of the world around you. And it's the challenge of understanding how to use the camera, which was uh, developed through science and mathematics and the ability to actually apply these ideas to material things, such as a camera, um, that allows us to use it as a tool. It's a tool that we use. We don't have to be scientists to, to use it, and therefore we don't have to be scientific or mathematical about equations and etc. of distances in order to use ISO, shutter speed, and um, the f-stop in a way that allows us to create the vision that we have of the city around us. Uh, art is something that comes from here, and so as a street photographer we should have the same attitude that we're out there not as technicians, but rather as people who are sopping up the world around us. And we're beginning to understand it in a visual way. And we take that and we show it to other people who don't have the time of day to stop and look. But when they do, and when we give them the opportunity to stop and look at our photos, that way their, their lives are enriched. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment if you've got anything to say about any subject of photography at all, um, you know, uh, give me a like if you if you like it or a thumbs up, whatever it is. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, that way you'll know that there's other videos being made in the future. Um, I wish you all the best out there. Autumn is here in most places around the world where you know where people are watching in the United States, in Europe, etc. Um, and I really hope you have great fun with your your uh, street photography.